Uh, our thoughts and prayers with I that know, family. That it's you. so emotional. It, it seems like it just brings out such a wave of emotions while you're watching it, then when you're in it, mm -hmm. and then the aftermath. And you to know? hear a story like that yeah. where she uh, luckily got to spend those final oh. precious moments with her dad. Oh, yeah. All right. Lacey is here eyeing our forecast this morning. Lacey, how are we doing? Hey, this morning we're starting off on a quiet note. We're still going through all the images and the scenes from Sunday's historic event as far as February is concerned. This is Drone 9 video from Norman. Check out some of these homes. It gives you this very close up view of the folks that lost so much. Folks lost so many different items from, you know, in some areas, it's just their entire home that was destroyed. And this is just the Norman area video from just one location. There are so many tornado locations and damaging wind locations as well across Oklahoma, starting on the far western border. Of course, Cheyenne was hit hard. I'll be showing you some of that video coming up. Had the one fatality in Cheyenne, but dozens, if not hundreds of homes, at least sustaining some sort of wind damage, if not tornado damage on Sunday. Now, some of the very preliminary ratings are out. Let me show you this map. This is just starting off here in central Oklahoma. We've had tornado reports up to the north in Alfalfa County. We've had tornado reports all the way back to the west, down to the southwest. So it's going to be a long time before we get all the tracks. But the one that touched down along I-40, down to the south, lifted up into Bethany. That tornado was on the ground for five miles in EF-1. The tornado that touched down just near uh, Bethel Acres, EF-1 as well. The one that touched down north of Shawnee, EF-2. The tornado down in Norman, 26 miles it was on the ground, 400 yards wide, an EF-2, high-end EF-2, and an EF-1 is the raking for the tornado that touched down north of Tuttle. Preliminary ratings so far will continue to add to that. Currently, across the region, all is quiet. We are clear. We're going to have a sunny day today. More 70s on the way. Fire danger, actually, a concern because the winds will pick up some, especially out west. And we've got snow flying in the Rockies. The storm system in the northwest right now, not going to impact Oklahoma as far as precip goes. Goes. Our next weather maker is just to the south of Alaska. So currently we're 42 degrees. We still have very pleasant weather. So many folks cleaning up. And again, the folks that didn't get a tornado at least sustained some minor tree damage, some roof damage. We've seen folks, so many folks that lost outbuildings, and a lot of that was due to the straight line winds. Temperatures 30s, 40s, 50s to kick off your Tuesday. Winds are 5 to 15 miles per hour. We're climbing back to the 70s, some upper 70s to the south. And notice the winds 15, 25, and a south West wind is really a dry wind for us, so the fire danger is high to extreme today. Please be very careful. We don't want to go back into a scenario where we're back talking big time wildfires across Oklahoma. That's possible, so be careful today. As far as the storm zone, as we look ahead for your Thursday, it's a low to a moderate threat. We'll start off with a few scattered showers, a few thunderstorms on Thursday into the afternoon. The main forcing comes out later in the evening and thunderstorms that'll be much stronger try to develop. Now, how far to the north does this moderate risk lift? How far to the south? Right now, still a couple of days away. We're monitoring it. I do think there's a chance we get some storms in the metro, but the higher end storm threat is definitely to the south. So tonight's quiet. Tonight a cold front arrives, low 30s in the panhandle, 40s, 50s in central southern Oklahoma. Tomorrow, 60s and some 70s. It'll be a little cooler to the central portion of the state. We try to rebound. South winds return late. Tomorrow actually looks beautiful for your Wednesday. Winds will be much calmer than today. There's that next storm coming in now over the Gulf of Alaska. It's still a long way from Oklahoma and I'm telling you it's going to ride the same pattern going to come down and just be a very potent wall of energy riding across the southern plains. It is taking a more southern track than what we had on Sunday so that risk is further to the south and east but still all modes of severe weather look possible. We have a chance to warm it into the 60s but warmer to the south upper 60s some 70s Gulf moisture comes surging right back. We'll have a few scattered showers and storms that develop cold enough in the panhandle to get a wintry mix and snow and the storms start to take off into the afternoon. Damaging wind threat will be with us once again. These storms will be moving very quickly. Once again, it does look like from the south metro and then down into southern Oklahoma to the southeast, some wind gusts, 70, maybe 80 miles per hour. Nickel dime, some golf ball size hail possible. May have quarter size hail threat in the metro for a while, but quickly this is racing off towards the east. The tornado threat for now looks just to the south and then ramps up down near Sulphur, Ardmore, Ada, Tishomingo, back to McAllister, Poto, Idabel. And again, this 
case could lift further to the north depending on how that storm swings out. It's still a ways away, so stay tuned. And yes, we're cold enough Thursday night into Friday to get some light snow, maybe grassy surfaces pick up close to an inch in a few areas. It melts quickly. Temperatures back to the 50s Friday afternoon, and we looked quiet into the weekend. Back to you guys.